Hello, welcome to Premium Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 24 of SQL Server. In this session, we'll learn about the rest of the built-in string functions that are available in SQL Server. Specifically, we'll be looking at replicate, space, pat index, replace, and stuff functions. Before continuing with this session, I strongly recommend to watch parts 22 and 23 of this video series. Alright, the first function that we'll look at is the replicate function. Now, if you look at the syntax of the replicate function, it has got two parameters, string to be replicated and how many times you want to replicate that given string. So this function repeats the given string for the specified number of times. Let's understand this with an example. If you look at here, I have the select clause, select, and then we have this replicate function. And to this, we are passing this presume keyword. That's the first parameter. And the second parameter, how many times you want to replicate this? I want to replicate this three times. So when we execute this, presume word along with the space next to it will be repeated three times. Okay. Now here is a simple practical example of the replicate function. If you look at this, we have got first name, last name, and email of the person. Now, what we basically want to do, we have seen in many of the real-time applications, they don't reveal full email address, uh, but maybe they will just reveal that, you know, using some masks. Um, you know, uh, so basically we are masking here the email address of a person using five star symbols and to do that we are using the replicate function and using the replicate function itself is pretty simple here look at this in the output we want the first name last name and you know the masked email so first name last name we will select it as usual but we want to mask the email column so first what we are doing we are getting the two the first two letters of the email okay and obviously if you want a sub string of a given string we use the substring function and we have spoken about substring function char index length in the previous session in a great detail so if you want to know how to work with that please watch the previous session so this first piece here it gives us the first two letters of the email and to that two letters we are actually concatenating using the plus sign five star symbols look at this this is where we are using the replicate function I want to replicate the star five times okay and then to the five stars we are then appending the at symbol and the domain okay aa.com or bbb.com whatever okay and again to get the at symbol and the domain we are using the substring because we want the rest of that okay so we are basically using replicate function to mask the email one of the practical uses of replicate function all right the next function that we'll talk about is the space function and this is a pretty simple function to understand okay now if you want a space in a SQL query you know you basically can use um, you know something like this so if I just want a space I can say select and you know within the single code we can specify how many ever space, spaces I want for example if I want five spaces one two three four five I have all the five spaces there and it shows I mean obviously you can't see a space but that's how it is now this is a little odd let's say if I want like ten spaces this becomes you know little odd to look at that's why using the space function is much better so when we say select space of maybe how many ever you want I want five space and this is more readable as well now in the first case you have to literally count one two three four five you have to do that Other, I mean here by looking at that you can say okay there is going to be five spaces now if I execute this line okay obviously we can't see them but okay so what we basically want to do with the space function is um, you know I want to insert you know five spaces between the first and last name you know I want the full name of the employee but between their first and last name I want five spaces how do I do that we just select their first name concatenate that with five spaces using the space function and then their last name and give it an alias name full name from table employee pretty simple and obviously if you want to do the same thing instead of using the space function you can literally put five spaces within single quotes here but then that's not that readable okay so the next 
very useful function that we'll talk about is the PAT index, standing for pattern index. Now this pattern index function returns the starting position of the first occurrence of a pattern in a specified expression. So in the in the given expression, okay, it will find the first occurrence of a pattern that you want. Okay. In a way, PAT index is similar to CAR index. Look at that. Pattern index, character index. Now both of them returns you know the index of a string but with pat index you have the flexibility of using wildcards but with car index you cannot use wildcards that's the only difference and both of them are extremely useful okay so here is a practical application of this pattern index now what we are basically doing here is we are finding the look at the query here so we are getting the email and within the within the email i am finding this pattern you know at aaa.com i want you know the index the start index of at aaa.com okay before that i don't care what what is there i mean do we have three characters four characters is it sam ram john whatever we don't care. That's why we are using the wildcards. Again, we have spoken about wildcards in a great detail in the previous sessions of this video series. So please check back if you don't know what are wildcards and how to use them. Okay. So we are specifying, okay, you know, I want the pattern index of this at aa.com, but I don't care what is really before that. Okay. Before that at symbol. And then we are using, so I want to find this pattern in this email column of the employee table. Okay, so obviously when we execute that query, you should see, so if you look at this, without, I'm executing this query without the where clause. So when I execute without the where clause, look at this, wherever we have aaa.com, at aaa.com, you know, we are getting the index there, the first occurrence. The first occurrence here is one, two, three at the fourth position. We get that. But look at this, here we got for at ccc.com. If you look at this string, we don't have at aaa.com string within that email so that why that's why it returns zero so if the given pattern is not found in the given string then it returns zero okay and so obviously if you just want the emails for which you have this index number then obviously you can use the where clause and filter that with greater than zero and it will only give us those emails which has got that pattern we want which is at aaa.com so that's about PAT index and, and it's very much similar to CAR index as I told you. All right, the next function that we'll talk about is the replace function. As the name says, it's going to replace something for us. So it basically, again, this function is really useful. We replace all occurrences of a specified string with another string. Okay, so I have the string ex you know, expression and a pattern and a replacement value. Okay, with in this original string, whatever pattern you specify, okay, we want to replace that pattern with this value. Okay, so if you want a very simple example, look at this. We have got first name, last name, email. Now what I want to do is I want to replace the dot com with the dot net. It's pretty simple to do. All you do is okay, use the replace function obviously. So for the replace function you specify in the email column, I want to replace dot com with dot net it's as simple as that and give it an alias as converted email from table employee let's see you know this query in action again these functions are very simple to use all you have to understand about is the parameters that it expects so let's execute this query you know the email and the converted email dot coms got converted into dot net Okay, so the final function that we'll talk about uh, is the stuff function. Um, you know, as the name states, it's going to stuff something. Okay, uh, so basically what this function does is it's slightly different to replace. I mean, it's going to replace some characters, but then look at this. The stuff function, it expects a string, and then within that string, at the start position you specify, and 
for how many characters the length okay and the replacement expression so what 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 the stuff function going is going to do is you can say okay start at position 2 if you look at the way we have used the stuff function here i mean it's very clear here uh, first let's understand the output that we want you know we want the first character from the email okay we want to leave it there but then for the next you know three characters after the first character for the next three characters i want to replace the next three characters you know in this case am and at symbol i want to replace that with five stars and then whatever follows that we just want that okay um so basically this is another kind of masking okay uh, using the stuff function and look at this if you look at the way we have used this stuff function uh, we are saying okay work on the email column on the email column start at letter 2 okay which means leave the first character but start at number 2 and then for the rest three characters you know if you take sam at aa.com okay start at 2 and the next three characters a m and at for these three symbols replace those three characters with five star symbols okay and then obviously we are giving it an alias as stuffed email and we have that there okay so basically stuff function inserts this replacement expression at the start position specified along with removing the number of characters that you have specified using the length parameter on this slide you can find resources for asp.net and c sharp interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day